Welcome to worship at First Lutheran. Whether you're in your PJs, sipping on coffee, just waking up, or more than ready for worship, you are welcome here. A few announcements for today. If you would like to be part of our virtual choir or to do the Bible reading or prayers, please let me know. It's always wonderful to have a diversity of voices and faces involved in our worship service. And although we are not meeting in person, the ministry and expenses of the church continue. So please continue to support the ministry of the church as you are able by mailing in your offering. The First Lutheran Women's Group will meet Wednesday, July 22nd at 6 p.m. in Memorial Hall. This will be a business meeting only. And please follow the procedures that are posted on the church doors, including wearing a mask and signing in at the door. Let us take a moment of silent reflection before we begin with our service today. whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. 
reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of mercy and care, you see us on the highest of mountains and in the lowest of valleys. Open our eyes to see the great communion of saints that surrounds us in those places and in every step in between. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from Joel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Petuel. Hear this, O elders, give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days, or in the days of your ancestors? Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. What the cutting locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Wake up, you drunkards and weep and wail, all you wine drinkers, over the sweet wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has invaded my land, powerful and innumerable. Its teeth are li lion's teeth, and it has the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and splintered my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it down, their branches have turned white. Lament like a virgin dressed in sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn the ministers of the Lord. The fields are devastated. The ground mourns. For the grain is destroyed. The wine dries up. The oil fails. Here ends the reading. Grace, peace, and mercy is yours in the triune God. Amen. We like to think that we know the Bible and its basic contents, but every so often we come up against something that reminds us that this collection of books contains mysteries that we will never truly understand. We will never know, for instance, who wrote the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament, even preachers in the third century did not know. And we know almost nothing about the book that we heard from today, the book of the prophet Joel. We have no idea when it was written, which famine Joel is talking about, or even who Joel is. It is clouded in a mystery that won't be revealed to us. So why did we hear from it today? The beginning of Joel isn't very uh, upbeat or comforting. Locusts have invaded in swarms and there is nothing left. No olives for oil 
or grapes for wine, no wheat for bread. The situation is dire. No one who was alive at that time had seen anything like it before. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? Joel asks. That bit, at least, sounds familiar to us. If I never hear the phrase, in these unprecedented times, again, it will be too soon. And in these words from thousands of years ago, I hear the cries of the poor today. The people in the so-called third world, as if they inhabit a completely different sphere from us, as if we were not intimately connected by the global economy, colonialism, and the consequences of unfettered capitalism. These words make me think of Yemen where a catastrophic famine and a civil war is added on top of the COVID-19 pandemic. Perhaps these words from Joel are uncomfortable to hear. After all, don't, don't we come to hear God's word and to find comfort and consolation in our distress, to feel like we're doing okay despite everything? That's not what Joel offers us, at least not in this part of the book. This opening part of Joel's invites us to lament, to feel the weight and pain of everything that has been lost over these past months. The way the world and our lives have changed, the hundreds of thousands of people who have died in the pandemic. And Joel tells, us, tells it like it is. There's no silver linings or always look on the bright side of life for him. But Joel doesn't stay there. Joel talks about the great day of the Lord, a description that we hear every year at Pentecost, a day when God will come and bring justice to the earth. And Joel talks about repentance, about turning away from the path we are on to pursue a better one, a path that is more just and more merciful, a path where what we confess with our lips is also what we confess with our hands and our feet out in the world. Because God has and does and will come alongside us in the difficult and impossible parts of life. But God also gives us agency and ability to create change in the world. So when everything feels dark and impossible, when we have no idea how or when or if the situation we find ourselves in will end, I find stories like Joel's comforting. The people of God have survived impossible things many times before, and we can do it again. Not because if we wait long enough, God will swoop in and save the day like the improbable ending of an action movie, but because God has given us each other. Paul tells us to consider, to consider others above yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. On the cross, Jesus tells the disciple John to take care of Mary, his mother, for him. In the early days in the church in Jerusalem, they held everything in common, and gave to everyone as they had need. Early Christians were considered absolutely ridiculous by the Romans because they would take in and take care of babies who had been left on the side of the road to die for one reason or another. In the midst of hard and seemingly impossible things, God invites us to name what is hard, to lament and to feel all the feels, to hold one another, and when our strength has returned even a little bit, to work to create a world that is more full of compassion and justice, mercy and love. Amen. Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of intercession. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go forth in the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Show love to everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of Almighty God, the Creator, the Savior, and the Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
live in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.